All right, we're going to take a look at a couple UGR, or Unitized Group Ration Trays. This is something I've actually never had before, and these were very generously sent to me by subscriber Darren. And I really do appreciate it. This is something I've been wanting to try for a long time, but uh, they're actually kind of hard to find nowadays. The UGR, or as I said, Unitized Group Ration, is a different way of feeding soldiers in the field. Of course, we're very familiar with the MREs, which is a single meal, sealed up in a bag, everything you need for one meal. Whereas the UGR uh, comes in these trays, which uh, feed, I believe, from 10 to 18 people. And it comes actually as, uh, it does come as a complete meal, but for a group of 18 to 50 people. And um, you get these um, plastic trays, which is kind of like a giant version of a retort pouch. And the UGR meal would consist of, uh, I believe, four of these trays and a bunch of other items, uh, most of them shelf-stable, some stuff might be perishable as well as condiments and flatware. And the one thing that's inconvenient about these is it's gonna be hard to heat these up. Uh, I believe at one time these actually were metal trays. Uh, that's something that you could actually put in an oven. Uh, but these, since they are uh, a plastic, it's a little bit more difficult. Most of the UGRs that the soldiers get, they actually have uh, a giant version of a flameless ration heater that you just uh, pull on the handles and it actually heats it up from the bottom. But of course I don't have that, I just have these two trays. Uh, luckily, it does give heating instructions on here, and it says to heat in water, submerge unopened tray in water, bring water to a boil, simmer gently 35 to 40 minutes, avoid overheating. The tray will show evidence of bulging if it's overheated, apparently. And these are another, like the MREs, these are another shelf-stable product. These trays are actually, I believe they're over five years old. They do have a Julian date coat on them. Here's actually what is printed on these, as far as on the uh, tray itself. Sweet and sour pork chop patty, 10 portions, has a date code of 1099. So that means that this uh, tray was packed on the 99th day of 2011. And this one right here is white rice, 18 portions, with a date code of 1028, 28th day of 2011. So these are both uh, getting close to six years old. Uh, the shelf life of these, I'm guessing, is uh, pretty similar to an MRE, three to five years if it's stored properly. I did see 18 months online, uh, but of course that's uh, kind of a safe bet on them. Uh, but what we have here is we have sweet and sour sauce over pork chopettes. And you can take a look at the ingredients and the nutrition facts. And to go along with those we have white rice. Here's the ingredients. You can see there's quite a bit of stuff for simply white rice. But uh, here's the ingredients, 18 portions and the nutrition facts. You can see this is a lot more than you need to get in an MRE. The uh, sweet and sour pork chopettes is uh, five and a half pounds, 5.5 pounds or 2.49 kilograms. And the white rice is 5.6 pounds or 2.55 kilograms. And both of these were made by Ameriqual, one of the three contractors that make the genuine MREs for the US government. And this one right here is also Ameriqual. So I guess all that's left is for us to go ahead and heat these up and try them out. Of course, this is ready to eat, uh, just like an MRE, so I could just open these up and eat them as is, but like with most rations, I think it's going to be better to try them heated. So I'm going to make an attempt to um, find a way to heat these up. All right, and since I don't have anything large enough to put these in to heat them up on the stove, I'm just going to put them in our kitchen sink. And then cover them with some hot water. It's definitely hot as you can see from the steam. And since these things seem to want to float a little bit, I'm just going to weigh them down with our rock or something. So it's 35 to 40 minutes. Um, it is obviously a lot of food, so it's a lot of stuff to get the heat into. So I'm going to give this some time. I'm going to replenish the water as needed, and then we'll go ahead and check these out. All right, we're about 15 minutes into the heating. I have added some more boiling water, and these things do want to float, so I've been using various methods to make sure they stay submerged. And I've been uh, flipping them around, so the labels are up on the top before, now they're down the bottom. And just to kind of make sure that the side that's being held down in the middle varies, and both sides get some heat. Alright, it's not easy to keep the heat up on this thing, to keep adding more water. I think that's going to be the last of it. I'm going to give it about 10 more minutes, and then we'll check them out. Alright, and here are our somewhat heated up UGR trays. And there were a couple more things I wanted to mention before we open these up. 
Uh, first off, a lot of the information I've gotten for this video and a lot of the photos that I've used come from the publication Operational Rations of the Department of Defense. And from that publication, I figured out that apparently these two uh, were part of uh, a single meal. In 2011, menu 13 consisted of sweet and sour pork cutlets, Cuban garlic beef, carrots, white rice, devil's fudge cake with white icing, fruit cocktail, lemonade beverage, peanut butter spread, and grape jelly. So you can kind of imagine how big a box would be that would contain these trays plus two more of the same size with the Cuban garlic beef, which I've heard is really good, and the carrots, along with all the other stuff. For whatever reason, the UGR trays seem to be a lot harder to find these days. A few years ago, you could come by them. I know the Epicenter actually sold them, and they, they have a number of reviews on, on these, even though they don't currently have them in stock. If you want to see a lot more reviews on the kind of stuff that you'd find in these trays, check out the Epicenter's YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below. And so now it's time to try these out. Let's see what the, uh, actually, white rice is not the most exciting thing in the world, so why don't we start with that. Basically, I have to cut this and then, uh, hmm, it's almost, looks more like brown rice. But that could be what uh, five years of uh, storage does to uh, white rice. And uh, that's pretty, um, there does seem to be some warmth in the middle, so it looks like the, the heating went all the way through, which is good. So that's our white rice. And now the uh, star attraction, the sweet and sour sauce over pork choppettes. Wow, there's a lot more in there than I thought. I thought it was just going to be the uh, chopettes, kind of like the um, kind of like the barbecue rib patties you find in the uh, MREs. But this has uh, looks like it's water chestnuts in here. It's a whole uh, a whole meal, really. This looks really good. Yeah, these things don't look bad at all. Let's go ahead and dig into them and try them out. I'm gonna try some of this uh, separately, and then uh, together. These chop heads are pretty big. Get some of these water chestnuts in here. Some sauce. There we go. And then we'll also uh, combine everything into a single dish. Rice is pretty solid, but you can't expect that from a rice that's been stored for over five years. All right, let's try this out. This is my first time ever trying something from a UGR tray. And keep in mind, of course, this is five years old, a little bit longer than it's really uh, rated to uh, last for. The rice, obviously nothing too special about that. And it tastes like your standard MRE rice. Uh, it's got a little bit of um, a little bit of seasoning in there. It tastes pretty salty, maybe a little bit of a butter flavor. Uh, kind of like how I like my rice with some butter and salt on it. Uh, but kind of clumpy, pretty firm. And it's definitely nice. It has a little bit of a little bit of temperature to it. It's not hot, and I'm sure it'd be even better if it was hot. But it's also not cold. I'm sure it'd be worse if it was cold. Let's try this pork chopette. Obviously, this is a, a shaped and formed thing, kind of like the uh, barbecue barbecue flavored rib. It's a very uh, processed meat product. That's uh, shaped like a pork chop. Let's try this out. And that's good. I think uh, if you've had the uh, barbecue pork patty, pork rib, I should say, well, pork patty, pork rib, um, if you like that, you'll probably like this. And if you don't like that and don't like the uh, McDonald's McRib, you might not like this, um, just because it's gonna it's gonna seem pretty um, unnatural to you because of the uh, 
chopped and formed nature of it. And if I had my choice, I think I'd go with the uh, a barbecue sauce rather than the sweet and sour sauce, but it's something different. I don't think there's any current USMREs that have uh, sweet and sour sauce. And it's certainly as good as uh, as a sauce. I mean, it's, uh, it gives it like a Polynesian kind of a Chinese food flavor. It's pretty, well, it's sweet and sour. It definitely has some sweetness to it. And you get a pretty good view of the, uh, the meat, the processed look of the meat. I did want to say, as I had mentioned, you know, MRE is a, uh, a meal ready to eat. And these are a number of meals for a group of people which are also ready to eat, you know, because they certainly don't need to be heated up, they can be eaten cold. And this isn't meant to replace food. Uh, the idea, of course, is to give soldiers fresh food whenever possible, uh, but sometimes in combat situations or even training situations it's just not possible to uh, give them a full mess hall kind of experience, bringing out a, a, a field uh, mess truck or something like that. And in this case, it um, rather than MRE, it gives them a chance to have something a little bit more like a, a real meal. Especially as a you know a group experience, and this stuff is obviously closest to the kind of stuff you'd find in an MRE. That's really good, and uh, I'm a big fan of water chestnuts anyway. It gives it a little crunch. And you can see we got some uh, pineapples in here. I'm seeing uh, looks like uh, red peppers. The standard stuff you'd find in a uh, a sweet and sour sauce. And there's the uh, water chestnuts right there. And we do have to try this all together too. I forgot that we do have the uh, the white rice, so we'll try it with the the pork and the rice. And not surprisingly, those go fine together. So some of the sauce with the rice. I'm sure the rice would go really good with the uh, Cuban garlic beef, too. So that was a look at a couple UGR, or Unitized Group Ration Trays. Sweet and sour sauce over pork chopettes and white rice. And I got a lot of leftovers, too. Thank you for watching.